Good morning, everyone. Welcome and thank you for joining us. My name is Tiana Wilkinson and I am a wellness consultant here at Pacific Source. I'm just going to get to, uh, to create the scene for us a little bit. We're in for a real treat today. We have two employers speaking on their strategies to support the health and well being of their employees. What's cool is that they didn't set up the exact same strategy. And if you walk away with one thing from today, it's that one size does not fit all. Every worksite wellness or well-being initiative is going to have a different look because you've got a different audience. You have different people involved, different players involved. You're going to hear today about a range of strategies. The fun stuff is often the wellness campaigns or challenges when employees or teams of employee or teams of employees compete around how many steps they take or how many fruits and vegetables they eat. And that's great. And that's the stuff that infuses fun and team building into your wellness initiatives. I hope you also listen for what are these two workplaces doing to make healthy choices easier, more convenient, and even enticing day in and day out. Because Creating habits is hard, and creating a healthy habit is even harder. Raise your hand if you're, you've ever worked on a goal around your personal well-being and struggled. <laughs> right? We've all been there. It is hard work. How do these work sites offer support for habit, habit building and maintenance? And we don't arrive at being well, right, and stay there our whole lives. Our health our well-being is going to naturally ebb and flow for each of us personally throughout our lives. That's part of being human, right? So how do we make sure our worksite wellness strategies, strategies feel supportive and inclusive no matter where we are in our journey? These two employers were picked to speak today because they went beyond a wellness program. They made it ongoing and part of their culture their leadership and employees got on board. Now I'm gonna introduce Amber Hagen, who is going to introduce our first speaker. I wanna hear what they have to say. So um, first I would like to introduce Ms. Judy Pont, the HR generalist at Keyknife. Um, Keyknife Incorporated is a privately held company established in 1986 to design and sell indexable knives and chipper systems to the wood products industry. Keyknife has grown by embracing the concepts of rapid change, customer service, innovative products, and focusing on a shared mission. As a 100% employee-owned company, Keyknife is committed to continued growth by using teamwork to advance skills and in providing exceptional customer service and value. Misty has been with Keyknife for 14 years. During this time, she has built the Thrive Wellness Team, which has led to Keyknife to be awarded as one of Oregon's healthiest employers. She has done this by creating a culture of wellness that makes the healthier choice the easy choice and getting employees to take charge of their own health. Without further ado, Misty DuPont. Thank you, Amber. Good morning, everyone. So I'll just jump into everything. So um, as Amber mentioned, Key Knife is a manufacturing company in Tualatin. We sell service, and manufacture for the wood products industry. We don't sharpen your kitchen knives. So we have employees. We're relatively small. We have 85 employees, our one manufacturing facility in Tualatin. And we have 15 employees internationally, four sales distribution offices, and 17 employees that work off-site. The majority of our employees do work in Tualatin, but we have employees in the South, Canada, and Europe as well and we've been 100% employee owned since 2010. Our wellness program, as it stands today, officially began in 2016. We formed a committee, so I lead a committee of five people, and we sought guidance from Pacific Source on how to develop an official program. Before this, our unofficial team was the HR department. We worked on just doing small little things here and there to set out fruit with cookies at birthday celebrations. We got rid of soda and cake at company functions. We encouraged people to bring in healthy things for potlucks. We did flu shot, flu shot clinics, and we just planned fun little events here and there. But it was just the HR department 
things here and there. So what we did in 2015 is our management team came up with this crazy idea to break our company up into four cross-functional groups. And everybody was broken up. They were assigned for, they were assigned a coach and they were told that we would compete against each other throughout the course of that year. We weren't told, we were told we were, there would be a prize at the end and we would earn points, how we were gonna earn these points, what the prize would be, just that we were competing against each other, there was gonna be a winner and be creative. So this year brought forth an idea lots of ideas from employees at all different levels. And we competed against each other to um, make Key Knife a better place, come up with ideas for each other. Employees came up with a snack shack, as you can see up here. We did food demos, they did a heart walk, organized a fun run, and just competed, donated toys, donated food, close our time and just came up with solutions for our fellow co-workers and we had a lot of fun doing it but it was also very crazy very energetic and very exhausting to always try to come up with a way to one-up each other in that way so we took what we learned in 2015 we already had a culture that promoted safety employee ownership and engagement and with this foundation, what we learned, what employees wanted, because obviously the employees were in 2015, we took all that and we developed our Live to Thrive program, which was born in 2016. So this is an example of what we put out each quarter. Our wellness program is broken out into quarters and how we do it each one is we have a challenge. This is a big activity that we're wanting everybody to participate in. We're pushing it. And so this quarter, we just finished up a three week water challenge. In the past, we've done walking challenges. We've done heart to start. And then we do activities throughout the course of the quarter. And these are simpler things like a lunch and learn. It doesn't involve a whole lot of time. And some things are things that people can do on their own, like watch a video. Um, watch it, listen to a podcast and just answer questions. And then, so in later this month, we're doing a lunch and learn on heart health. And then at the end of the month, we're doing shake the salt where they'll be tracking their salt intake for three days. We've done blood pressure monitoring in the past and all those sort of things. These columns on the other side that say thrive bucks and tickets, that's our reward system. I'm going to get to that in a minute, but first I want to talk about how we got to this right here. So like I said, we started our program in 2016. We did four challenges and 12 activities. Our challenges had 48% participation. We had, did water challenge, heart to start, fruit and veggies, and a walking challenge. And then our activity participation was 35%. We did a lunch and learn, toy drive, food demo, volunteering, the Providence Heart Walk and Blood Pressure Monitoring. 2017, we did four challenges and seven activities. Our participation dropped a little bit to 34% overall, but the national average is more like 20% for a wellness program. So we still felt we were doing really good. In the fall, we do a health and wellness, health and safety fair. So in order to get a feel on how we were doing in the second year, kind of since we saw that participation had dropped a bit, we asked our employees five simple questions to find out, you know, if we were doing things right, what they would like to see, what's worked for them. And one of the questions we asked, we asked people what measures they'd taken throughout the year to lead a healthier life. And drink more water, meditate, walk more, and eat better were the ones that showed up. And these were all programs that we had done in either 2016 or 2017. And then we asked them, what was the inspiration to make this change? And out of the 60 people, 29 people, so almost half, said our challenges or activities had been something that had spurred them to 
make one of these changes in their behaviors. And then the follow-up was a family or friend. So 21% people said that. So now into our rewards program. As we know, you know, people should want to live healthier. We've encouraged it. It should be something that they just want to do naturally to live a healthier life, but that's not always the case. So we came up with a reward system, and this is our Live to Thrive store. We developed Monopoly-like money. So this is our, our money over here that we had printed out with our logo on it. And employees, as they complete those challenges and activities over the course of the year, um, we tally everything at the end of each quarter. So each quarter, they're awarded the money um, that they can, and they can shop then each quarter. They can save it to buy more expensive things. So this is a store that we have in our office. We have an online catalog for our employees that aren't in the office, and they can just submit their order. We switch out the items, a few of the items every year in order to keep it interesting, keep some of the higher end items if people are saving. But our two consistent top sellers that we've kept in the store, the Hydro Flasks, those sold like hotcakes the first year. It was crazy. And then we've also offered the Sonicare toothbrush. And that one's also was a surprising top challenge or top seller thinking, okay, a toothbrush, but maybe it's an expensive item. People aren't going to want to buy it on their own, so they're taking it home to their family and sharing it that way. And on the Sonicare toothbrushes, we see it as a win that for the past three years, we have had no increase in our dental premium. So we encourage um, employees to get cleanings as part of a bonus activity, which I kind of skipped over and go back here real fast. We have bonus activities here at the bottom. So over the course of the year, they can do bonus activities. And they're cleaning at any point throughout the year, and they get 25 Thrive Bucks for that. So they're getting their dental cleanings at least once a year, and they're using that Sonicare toothbrush. And so we felt that's a savings. Also in these bonus activities, we encourage them to get an on-site biometric screening or just go get a physical with their, from their doctor. We do on-site flu shots, or they can have alternatives if they don't believe in flu shots. And also, they can do a 5K run or walk and organize volunteering, and that gives them bucks as well. We also have another piece of our incentive program, and that's the tickets. We have three grand prizes every year. So p employees, when they complete the challenges, the challenges, like I mentioned, were the big thing that we're pr promoting. And if they complete the full thing, they'll earn not only the bucks, but they'll also earn a ticket. And this ticket they can put into one of the grand prizes. And the grand prizes, these are our 2016 grand prize winners that we draw in January after the year ends. And the first employees, um, won the Improve Your Health, and he got a fitness membership for himself and his family at Club Sport. The next employee won travel, and so he took his family for a stay in Sun River. And the last one was retail therapy, and they went on a shopping spree to Dick's and Cabela's Sporting Goods. So this is just uh, maybe the little things in the store don't incentivize somebody, but the grand prize, a $2,000 grand prize, is maybe a, a motivator for some people. And so they can do it that way. And we typically give, there's only four to five tickets that they could earn throughout the year for that. So what have we learned from all this? The main thing is to keep it simple. We've tried programs where they have multiple steps, like signing up and you have to do this and this and this. And just keeping it simple seems to be the, the key in order for people not to get confused or skip pieces as they go along. And also for us tallying, it's really complicated to try to say, okay, you did this, but you didn't do this. Were you meaning to do this? And so that's the, that's the main thing. And then over and over, find different ways to communicate what you're doing. It's email every week on Monday. It's called our Monday Motivator. It has either a health fact tip information on it. It can have a quote or just information on what we're doing. So like for our water challenge, it was information on 
the importance of drinking water, what water does for you, and just reminders, hey, turn in your numbers, all this sort of thing. Next week, you're going to be doing this. Just find different ways to communicate the same message over and over again in order to, because people go, oh, I didn't hear about that. I didn't know this was going on. So that's the main thing. And then we use the internet and our community resources a lot. There's a lot of free stuff out there that we've found, and we just kind of take it and make it our own. We work with our vendors. Uh, we work with Providence. We asked Dr. Beckerman to come in for Heart to Start, and he did a lunch and learn for us, brought us all books, and then we participated in their Heart Walk. We've partnered with Pacific Source on a lot of things. They've give us, given us a lot of things. Safe has also given us a lot of ideas, and then we just kind of take it and make it our own. And then we've also figured out what works for our group. So figure out what works for you and stick with it. It's okay to repeat things. We just completed the water challenge. We did a water challenge in 2016. There's, a, there's new employees coming in all the time. People need reminders of healthy habits. And what sinks in at one point, maybe something that it will sink in eventually, like they try it, it wasn't their thing. Well, now it means something to them down the road. Sorry. Um, the other things that we found that works for our group is jump roping. We've asked employees to come out and take a break, do jump roping for three minutes, and just pick up a flyer on heart health. Just something fun. It doesn't impact manufacturing. We can make an announcement and say, hey, everybody come over, jump rope pick up a flyer, and it's just something easy. It kind of just helps to bring that awareness, something fun that they can do with their coworkers, but it's not impactful and just kind of getting that information out to them. We did blood pressure tracking for a week. We bought little blood pressure tracking machines. We set them up in our office and in our lunchroom and asked employees, during this month, just track your blood pressure for a week. We don't want to see it, but just track it and note that you did it. And then um, what were the results from it? Did you learn anything from it? And a lot of people felt they were healthy, didn't know they had high blood pressure, maybe didn't see the doctor regularly. We had a few people that went, oh my gosh, I maybe need to go see my doctor to start tracking my blood pressure regularly. So it just brought up that awareness there. Um, our employees love walking challenges. We've got the most participation from those consistently. They like the competition of it. So we do one at least once a year. In 2015, we bought all of our employees Fitbits for the 20 buy-in. And now we offer the same thing for new hires. So when a challenge comes up, they will have their Fitbit in order to use going forward. And a lot of employees are still wearing those Fitbits that they bought and checking their stats, challenging each other, and just doing it all on their own without even a challenge going on. Um, our employees competition. So in November, we came up with the idea. We just invited everybody up into three groups. We said manufacturing, sales, and office. You guys are going to compete against each other for the month of November and to see who can raise the most cans and cash for the food bank. And it was great. We had employees participating that didn't normally participate, just that peer pressure. And just, they didn't have to do anything. They were just automatically in a group. So they just, um, and giving, obviously, a great concept. And so they were able to do it that way. And then be flexible. So in 2017, our second quarter, thought, well, everybody's busy. Summertime, a lot's going on. So we came up with a summer playlist. And for the summer playlist, we gave everybody a list of 50 activities and just said, over the course of the quarter, do these activities, write down what date you did it, send us pictures. And you know, pictures were encouraged, but not always required for everything. And they could just do them as they pleased. And the activities were simple, like mow your lawn, wash your car, just activities to get outside, and then we have some crazy ones in there, you know, whitewater rafting, kayaking, 
things that you know were more challenging for people that they wouldn't maybe do. Um, we did outdoor yoga. We had a group doing outdoor yoga, that sort of thing. And so these are just some of the fun pictures that we got from people during that time. Things that we've found that don't really work well for our group is potlucks. For some reason, potlucks have consistently been a fail, no matter how we've branded them or incentivized them. So we kind of don't really do those anymore. Uh, group volunteering. We tried doing it where we got everybody or group of people together and went and volunteered, but the impact on manufacturing and trying to logistically coordinate and some people felt left out because they didn't get to go in this group and that sort of thing, it made it really difficult. So that's why we added it as a bonus activity. And then also organizing a large 5K event, we tried doing that and to say, hey, on this Saturday, you're all gonna go here and do this. People have commitments, they don't wanna give up that Saturday or whatever. So we added that one as a bonus activity as well. So they could just go on their own, pick an organization or event that meant something to, to them, gather their friends and just do it on their own. So rather than us trying to logistically gather everybody. We also have other perks in our organization that aren't directly tied to our health and wellness program that, that kind of support it as well. We have an on-site workout room that employees can use in our Tualatin location. And then for those that don't work here, uh, they are able to, we offer to buy them a gym membership to use. We also have on-site subsidized healthy vending. So a salad costs $2 out of the vending machine. You can eat it at, at your desk, at, you know, wherever, at, rather than running to a fast food place. And then like a kind bar, is cheaper than a candy bar. So just to kind of encourage subtly those healthy activities. We also have a strong focus on safety. We're SHARP certified. We do a health and safety fair every year, and it's just a required training. It's not something that's voluntary where you just kind of wander through. It's this is your training. You're gonna go in this room from this time to this time, learn about your benefits. And so we get a lot of participation that way. We also have, um, we do annual biometric screenings and flu shots still. So bringing those, the, the options on site for people so it's easy and convenient to get your flu shot, do your screening in their office, you can take a break, come over and do that. And then we have an employee assistance program, RBH, and they've um, helped help our employees with financial issues, legal, mental health, and just last, this last year, we asked them to bring in an advisor to talk to all of our employees about estate planning when we had an employee um, die unexpectedly. And it just kind of created a mess for him and his family. And so we wanted people to be aware and be able to plan for themselves and say, hey, this is what happened, but this is what I can learn from this. And then the big thing we have is we have an employee garden of 40 beds on site. So employees can come in after work on their and they can work in their garden beds. They just have to sign up for it, plant whatever they want, and then they can grow their produce throughout the year, um, share it with everybody, donate it, or it's just a nice way for everybody to encourage them to get outside and to eat healthy and to grow their own food. Why do we do all this? So we want our employees to be happy and healthier. We are employee owned, and so we want healthy co-owners. And we want employees to be living uh, healthier, more productive, and engaged when they're at work. And when they are healthier, they're gonna be less likely to miss work. So our goal is to keep up participation and engage new employees we want to find a way to help employees continue the healthy activities that we've been promoting, and we want to keep it fun. We don't want our wellness program to be something that we're forcing on everybody. We want it just to be something that's fun that we're all doing together. And I'm going to close with a few employee success stories. So recently, I had an employee come and talk to me. He said, hey, will you come look at my Fitbit stats on the computer? I said, sure. 
And he stopped smoking in January as part of his New Year's resolution. And he said, look at this on the screen. And he said, my resting heart rate dropped. I stopped smoking. I'm using the Nicorette gum. And you can see there's this drop. And then in February, he stopped the gum because obviously he wanted to be completely um, nicotine free. And you could see another drastic drop in his resting heart rate. And he thought this was amazing. Like, wow, this is encouraging and this correlation, because you don't really think of resting heart rate as something um, being tied to um, nicotine. And so just being able to see that was a real encouragement for him. And then also on the Fitbit, note um, because we do offer them to new hires um, i had an employee say that you know fitbits are expensive so it's not something that they would have gone out and bought on their own so they really thought it was a cool benefit and then being able to participate in the challenges and then also just to be able to see their stats every day how many steps they're walking in order to it just encouraged them to get up and move more and just be more active so that was a nice correlation and everything. And then, um, like I mentioned, last year we did a meditation challenge. Another employee mentioned that um, they had kind of, they knew about meditation, they hadn't really done too much about it. So we brought in somebody that led meditation for us and kind of taught us techniques. And he said that the that activity was something that really helped him to learn more about it in a, a, you know, a safe environment, learn more skills and just get a better understanding of it. And it's not something that he consistently does regularly, but it's something that he'll pick up when he's stressed or want to focus. So it's another tool in his healthy toolbox. It's just, okay, it's not something that he's doing regularly, but it's something now he knows about and can use uh, to benefit him in the future. And then just recently, we had an employee who had her brother pass away due to high blood pressure. And herself and her family are predisposed to high blood pressure. And they, um, she particularly had not been taking her blood pressure medication. So now she is on board with her other siblings who are still alive. And they are holding each other accountable and just really um, an awareness and so next week we are doing a lunch and learn on heart health and she's going to share her story with our group and also she is now saving all of her thrive bucks in order to buy her all of her siblings um, blood pressure monitors from the store so we thought that was a, a really you know unfortunate event but a cool correlation that she's willing to share that story and that she wants to use the store in order to buy those monitors for her family. And like I mentioned earlier, we just finished up with our water challenge for the first quarter. We'd done a water challenge before, but we mixed it up this year by adding a detox bar. And the detox bar was just, we put out vinegar, apple cider vinegar, and lemons. And employees just had to um, come take a shot of the vinegar and the lemons with water. They had to do it three times a week and they got bonus bucks for doing it. They didn't have to do it as part of the water challenge, but it was just a bonus activity just to kind of make it fun. Engage, some of us drink water all the time throughout our day, so it wasn't much of a challenge. So we thought adding the detox bar just gave it that little extra level and challenged those people who were already being healthy with water. And it was really fun to see the, the reactions from people. Yeah, we have a question coming from it, Robin online. Can you tell us more about your water challenge and how it works? Sure. So our water challenge, and actually this one worked out really great. Um, we just put a clipboard in the lunchroom this time. We didn't ask people to sign up. This is part of keeping it simple. We just put a, a clipboard in the lunchroom. We said, everybody's in the challenge. Clipboard's right there. You go into the lunchroom every day. Just write down your water. So we set... Um, each week, stepped it up a bit. So the first week was 32 ounces of water. You had to drink 32 ounces. Just write it down, how much water you drank. The next week was 48 ounces. 
and the next week was 64 ounces. And as long as people are trying and making an effort, you know, if one day you didn't hit the goal, we're not penalizing them. We're not saying, well, we're going to deduct you bucks. We're just, as long as you made an effort, you wrote things down and you tried, then we're giving you credit for that. As far as the detox bar, adding that on, you could do it as many times throughout the week as you wanted, but we only said if you did it three times a week, you got an extra five, five Thrive Bucks that week. So it was just a fun way to kind of throw that in there and make it, make it interesting and different from the last time that we did it. And people said that the detox bar, it gave them energy. It um, helped with their digestion and just kind of other people made faces and said they'd never do it again. But to each their own, you know, and it just, other people think it's the greatest thing in the whole entire world and are doing it every day now. So you're gonna hit somebody with something and you're not gonna hit everybody. So it's just figuring out, they're gonna figure out what works for them. And with this water challenge, we had 60% participation because we, and we felt that it's probably because I don't know, maybe New Year's resolution or just we kept it simple. We kind of just said, hey, everybody's everybody's doing this. And we they didn't we eliminated the barriers of having to sign up and do this and that. It was just right there in front of them. So overall, our goal is just to improve awareness, plant the seed of living healthier. People don't always pick up on things right away. But when they see other employees drinking water, eating healthy, walking on their breaks and lunches, it just encourages them to stop and think and maybe choose that healthier option now, down the road, that sort of thing. Any questions for me? So a program like this is really impressive, and it takes a lot of support from your leadership team. So did this come from the leadership team? Did it come from your department? Was it a combination of both? How did you get the support? Um, like I said, in 2015, the management team. Oh, sorry. Um, how do we? How did we get the support? Get here. So, like I said, in 2015, management team came up with the idea to divide us up into teams, and they thought it was amazing the ideas and what came out of that, and so just going into developing the program our senior vice president is on our committee and so it's myself senior vice president our safety specialist our manufacturing manager um, an employee in canada and then a guy from the protection floor so that's our team we try to keep it um you know well-rounded and obviously since we are employee owners we want everybody to be healthier and happier and we're we see the correlation and so, um, you know, some of the management team is a little bit resistant. They don't always, but they're, they're very supportive of what it is. And whether they participate or not, they're there supporting and saying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Any tips for involving your employees that aren't working in the manufacturing site, the remote employees? We... Um, it's kind of, that is our biggest struggle because they are remote. We do have, um, some of them, English is not their primary language there in Canada or Europe. Um, out of the 17 that we have that do not work in our facility, nine of them participated in the water challenge. Um, of those nine, probably seven of them participate in everything. Um, you know, we're, we're working Every time we develop a program or whatever, we try to come up with ways to engage people um, and different people. And so um, a lot of the field employees have mentioned that they like, we record all of our lunch and learns and take notes at them and then come up with like a 10 question, not overly difficult, but just to say, to prove that you watched it and paid attention. And so, and like I said, it's not graded as long as they turn it in and get the gist of it. 
um, they like those things because they're on the road a lot. So in their hotel room, they can sit on their computer, watch the lunch and learn and answer the questions. And so to having employees at different manufacturing employees that don't have computer access, you know, a lot and field employees, it, we're always trying to come up with things. And we found some things. The meditation challenge did not work for those employees. Watching meditation on a screen, they said was a no go for them. So if we do that one again, we'll find another way to do it. Um, getting that feedback really helps. Stuart? Yeah, question from Jasmine. What is the detox bar? You can explain that a little bit further. Okay, one more. So, um, so our detox bar, we just set out like Bragg's raw apple cider vinegar and then lemons, cut up fresh lemons. And so you take about an ounce of vinegar, squeeze in a little chunk of lemon, and then um, most people add water to it. It's really hard if you take it straight. And it's best to shoot it or, you know, in a couple of gulps and um, take it that way. It's a cleansing detox. Great. We have another question from Steve. In your advice, you say that you stick with what works. How do you determine what works? We survey our employees because we're small. We get a lot of feedback um, as it's going. People will just kind of tell us, <laughs> like, hey, this was really confusing, or they'll turn it in and we'll be like, we'll notice things like why did you guys not do all the pieces or this was difficult so because we're always having that communication with people um, um, kind of ask questions and we do surveys we've done we've done a really big elaborate survey our first year which kind of gave us a, a starting point and at this point we find it's better just to do a really short survey like we did and just kind of get a feel for are we doing what you want? Do you want to see something different? Uh, that sort of thing. Yeah, this question is from Carrie. What community resources do you see the most value in? Um, we use Pacific Source a lot. Um, they have really great um, programs and kind of all things that are already set up, like their walking challenges, which you can kind of just plug and play, and they um, will print materials and everything. We've used them a lot. SAFE does a lot of things with um, theirs. We've worked with Providence quite a bit in, like I mentioned with Dr. Beckerman, we've just kind of found things through other employees because our one employee is involved with OSHA and Sharps. She hears a lot from other organizations, like what are you doing kind of in this setting? And so we just kind of take them um, and do things that way. Yeah. How did you build that relationship with Providence? Um, an employee's daughter works for them, and they like they went to the Heart Walk one year, and so we just called up Dr. Beckerman and said, "Hey, will you come talk with us?" And he said, "Sure." So, so always ask the question, I guess. Cool. Well, thank you guys. <laughs>